Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for The Shooting Show. Welcome to the PRS event at the Air Rifle League of Great Britain, sponsored by Premier Guns. What are we going to be doing today? Well, hopefully you've already watched our first video on the PRS event and you've thought to yourselves, that looks like a lot of fun. And it was a huge amount of fun to take part. But what we're going to do today is we're going to look about the kit and the things that you will actually need to shoot PRS. We're going to set up our guns, we're going to set up our scopes, and we're going to look at ways to improve your PRS experience. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and let's get on with the show. Okay, so within PRS, obviously you need a gun. Now, they do allow single shots, but the vast majority of people will be multi-shots. This is a AGN Vulcan number no. two, and we've got Ryan with us, who seems to be shooting an RTI. Now, Ryan, do you want to talk us through some of the guns and scopes and things that you would need to shoot PRS to a good level? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, um, obviously the airgun PRS is, is incredibly new. This is the first event. So I've sort of transposed what I've learned shooting full bore and rimfire rifles onto this. So this is a RTI uh, P3 compact performance. And the reason I went with the compact one is so I can add some weights on the rail there just to make it balance a bit better. Yeah. Um, in testing, this thing's been brilliant. Yeah. Certainly if I miss, it's gonna be me not pointing it in the right area. <laughs> um, but what I've done is, again, using some hard earned experience from the center fire and the rim fire world, yeah. is bought some of that that gear in just to make me feel at home. So I've pulled the scope from my uh, my, my race rifle, my center fires. It's a Carles uh, 525 DLR scope. Yeah. We've got a MDT send it level here, yeah. which is an electronic spirit level. Yeah. Air guns, you've got enough trouble with the wind without being canted, so. Actually, I, I would guess if you're shooting out at 100 meters with sub 12 foot pound, if you've even got a few degrees of cant, that's going to send your pellet off absolutely miles. It's, it's going to have an impact for sure. So, you know, we, we want to do everything we can to hit the target, so why not? Could you have a spirit level here as well, as opposed to the MDT? Yeah, that doesn't need batteries. Excellent. Well, that's, always, <laughs> that's always good. Um, and then moving along, we've got RTI's uh, extended rail, which is Arca and Picatinny. Yep. So I've got a, uh, a plate here, which again, widens the footprint of the rifle, makes yep. it more stable on a bag. And then uh, my usual bipod, which is an MDT Skypod. So this will go every which way you want. It will adjust very, very wide, very, very narrow. And it has two levels of extension as well. Wow. So that, you know, again, it's sort of familiarity with the gear. And the one yep. thing that, to be honest, whenever I go shooting, I take this with me and this would be one of the essential pieces of gear is a barricade bag yeah um there's many many types this one is a victory bag from presidia field sports again yep. another sponsor of the event i've lent you my spare one as well thank you very much um and as, <laughs> as far as as far as essentials if you've got a rifle and a bag you're hot to trot and good to go right. when i'm good when i'm gauging wind mm -hmm. i'm going to be licking my finger and going like that mm -hmm. i've also got a bit of paper telling me the ranges so you've got something a bit better than a, yeah. than a licked finger, haven't you? So, and again, it comes back to sort of the, the center fire and the rim fire um, bits and experience. So we've got a couple of pairs of binoculars. We've got some Swarovski 1556s for spotting, SIG Kilo 10Ks for range finding. Yep. Even though you get the target distances, it's always best to verify it. Trust but verify is something you'll hear a lot in the PRS circle. And then... This is a Kestrel with uh, applied ballistics. Now, normally we'll use this to tell us where the bullet's going to drop, how much wind to give it, etc., etc. However, nothing like that exists yet for air gun pellets. So we're using this purely as a wind meter, and we're using Strelop Pro to tell us how much the pellets are going to be dropping. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit different to HFT, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there'll be a lot going on, but this will help. It will give us a visual indication as to which way the wind's going. Yeah. And it, obviously also, it will give us the wind speed as well. So if we switch it on now, it's going to pick up yeah. pick up the wind, and you can see how fast it's going and what direction. Uh, and this is the thing, you know, those of us who shoot uh, on a regular basis, now at 50, 60 yards, we can shoot ragged hole groups you know with even with spring guns but out of 100 meters even the slightest gust of wind right to left will send a pellet 8 12 two feet you know to the left hand side so the ability to read wind is paramount it's going to increase your hit your hit probability which is 
ultimately, it's what we're here for. We're here to hit targets by whatever means possible. <laughs> whatever means, so grenade. <laughs> hey. PRS with a grenade. That sounds fun. There you go, that sounds like fun. <laughs> We've just spoken to Ryan about the equipment, the guns and the scopes. But the question is, how do you set up a rifle for PRS? Do you set up the scope to dial in or do you use hold over and hold under? We made a video the other day at Moreland District Air Gun Club on how to set up your rifle for PRS. So I'll now hold you over to Gary in the past who'll show you exactly how to get it done. If you're going to take part in PRS shooting in the Air Rifle League, you've got to set your gun up. Now, there aren't many places where you can shoot out to 100 metres. Here at Maldon District, we've got a plinking range that goes out to 75 yards, and I've got special permission to shoot across the range, so I've been able to get my 100 metres in. Speak to your local gun club, or speak to any friendly people you know who've got large strips of land, and they'll be able to set out targets, but you must get permission to shoot where you want to be. Now, you've got two ways of setting your gun up. You can either dial in or you can use hold under and hold over. What a lot of people will be doing on Sunday is they'll be dialing their scope in. What they'll be doing is they'll go up to their target because in PRS you are told the ranges before you shoot that particular target. So let's say we're shooting our first set of targets. We know that the first one is 40 yards and the second one in 80 is 80 yards. So I'll have a dope chart and I'll know that I'll have to give my scope five clicks up to hit the 40 yard target. And then I can put my crosshair slap bang in the center of the target. And then I have to give it 10 clicks down to go for the 80 yard target. So we're dialing in each time we're adjusting the elevation. I'm not gonna do that because I've never shot a sport where we dial in and it's just too much for me to work out. What I've got on this scope is a multi aim point reticle. That means I haven't just got a crosshairs, I've got hash marks above and below. So I've set out my chart. Now on the day, this is gonna be laminated, but this is just the one that I've been using to set up. So I know that at 25 meters, I need to use my fourth hash mark above the crosshair. At 30 meters, that's around about 3.8. 37 at three, 47, 2.5 above, 50 is two above, 60 is one above, and then at 65, we're crosshairs. Then at 70, 0.7 under, 80, 0.3, sorry, three mil dots under, 90, four mil dots under, and at 100 meters, five mil dots under crosshair. So I know that when I come up onto the target, let's say I've got two, one at 40, one at 80, I'll look at my chart and I go, right, first one is two mil dots above cross, 80 meter, three mil dots below cross. So I just need to remember two and three, and I can have that written down on the scope or on my hand or something like that. So I run up, or I don't run up, I go up to the target, two mil dots above, three mil dots below, bang, bang, and we'll miss them both for wind. But setting up and getting your rifle ready is incredibly important with PRS. If you're not prepared, you're not gonna have a good day. So get yourself to a range, speak to your local gun club, and once you're all set up, go and have some fun. The cotton, what my aim point is, hang on a sec, uh, 1.5 above. <laughs> okay. Shoot ready? Shoot ready. Impact! 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 
There's another half target left, mate. You got it. Well, we're halfway through shooting the PRS here at the Air Rifle League, and I've just grabbed Ryan again. Now, as we've said before, Ryan shoots PRS, but with a 6.5 Creedmoor? Uh, with a 6mm BR or 6mm Dasher, so with, with a bullet gun, basically. A big, that's what, three, 4,000 feet per second? No, 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 much, much slower. But uh, we, the trend in PRS, because you're self-spotting, yeah. is to run the gun slower so you can see more. Right. So we'll shoot probably a 107 grain bullet, around uh, 2,800 for the Dasher and 2,730 feet per second wow. for, the, uh, for the BR. So apples to oranges in comparison to what we're doing today. So this is sub 12 foot pound. What kind of foot poundage would you be running at with uh, I, I, Lots. At a rough, with with the centre fires, yeah, you're running uh, around about 15, 1600 feet, uh, foot pounds at the wow. muzzle. Wow. Um, versus, I mean, as an example, the rifle I'm using today, I'm shooting an eight and a half grain pellet at uh, 760 feet per second. Wow. So it's a big difference. So. Obviously, as an experienced PRS shooter, how would you say that this compares to, to when you're shooting the stuff with the bullet guns? It's uh, the similarities and differences. So ballistically, there's, there's no comparison. The yeah. two are polar opposites. You know, with an air gun and the lightweight Diablo-shaped pellets, mm. with a, a tiny breath of wind, you know, the pellets getting pushed rather a lot. Yeah. Whereas with a, a centerfire rifle, you, you've got a very sleek uh, boat tail shaped pointy bullet that's yeah. just going to glide through the air effortlessly yeah. and it, you know the wind it's a it's still the biggest factor yeah. but you get a little bit more forgiveness yeah um you know these the, the air guns today you know we've all noticed it as we shot this morning we've been bouncing either side of the target yeah and it's the wind's been been kicking up on everybody however from a, a sheer enjoyment and positional shooting against the clock point of view the, the fun, the atmosphere and everything else is the same. You know, we're using a lot of the same sort of props that would be used in rimfire, centerfire, PRS. And, you know, the atmosphere, the willingness of everybody to, you know, there's a lot of experienced guys have come out and the willingness to share kit and yeah. give help and advice is, is this, it's mirrored wherever you go in the world. So I suppose one of the big things, and it'll be good for this for training, is obviously the thing I've found hard today is transitioning from prone to kneeling to standing to kneeling to prone because I'm just used to shooting prone or you know kneeling or standing but I have time to set up whereas I suppose if you're training in this the ability to move your gun in a safe manner if from a prone to a kneeling position and get yourself set up will be the same with sub 12 or with a bullet gun absolutely target acquisition is one of the single biggest areas to to make big gains you often find with prs that hunters are very people who hunt are very very good at it yeah because they're used to pointing their target at what they're pointing their rifle at the target yeah. or whatever they're going to shoot and you know particularly with the the full ball stuff a lot of the top guys everybody has a hunting background yeah you know because like we spoke about earlier you're orienting your hips at the target yeah you put your rifle on you're always steering the rifle and you put it on the targets in your field of view so you can close the bolt and make a good shot and then on to the next one and that's yeah. having that target acquisition it, particularly this is where the time crunch comes into it because yeah. if you think you know shooting um for the guys who, who are hunters you know shooting squirrels and rabbits well those things squirrels especially aren't still for very long no and you've got to be able to make an accurate first shot yeah to be successful when you're doing it it's the same with this um, you know, and like you said, the transitioning between the different shots, well, it's only going to help you whether you're, you're shooting HFT and you want to get on a peg. If your target acquisition's good, well, you've just bought yourself more time yeah. to confirm your wind and make sure you're happy before you make that one good shot yeah. on, a, on a lane. Well, 
master class in PRS shooting. Ryan, <laughs> thank you very much. Pleasure, We've mate. got another four sections left to shoot and we'll come and see you again at the end of the video and see how we got on. So we've had an absolutely wonderful day here at the Air Rifle League of Great Britain PRS event, the inaugural event. How do you think the day's gone, guys? Yeah, really good. We've had some really good feedback. Uh, we've learned a lot. Competitors have learned a lot. Uh, yeah, we're really happy with it going so far and uh, looking forward to next year. And one of the best things, I think, is on the targets you've got out 100 metres, at least you haven't lost that much paint because no. virtually nobody's hit anything. <laughs> Cheap day for us. <laughs> Cheap day for you. Yeah, yeah. So where is the uh, Air Rifle League of Great Britain going in the future? So this is going to be the home. Brook Valley is going to be the home of the Air Rifle League of Great Britain. And we're yep. looking for, to have um, a national event. So there'll be courses all around the country. So come March, we'll put on one per month. Yep. And then we'll have sort of different venues around the country having the same course of fire on the same day. Well, there you go. Air Rifle League of Great Britain looks like it's taking over the world. Gentlemen, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> thank you very much and thank you for an absolutely wonderful no, day. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks for coming. See you all again very, very soon. Take care. Ta da.